Have you been looking for a free and open source note-taking and to-do application that is cross-platform, meaning it's available on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, as well as your mobile operating systems, Android and iOS? It is able to synchronize using cloud syncing services such as Dropbox, OneDrive, Nextcloud. The application I'm talking about is called Joplin. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the Joplin website. This is joplinapp.org is the URL, and I will link to the website in the show description. So again, Joplin is free and open source software. It is your standard note-taking to-do application. It is really cool because you can synchronize all your devices with Joplin because it has desktop clients for all your major desktop operating systems, and it, of course, has mobile clients for your mobile operating systems as well. And then you can sync through services like NextCloud, which is great for me as a Nextcloud user, but you can also use proprietary cloud syncing services like Dropbox, OneDrive, etc. Installing it is very easy. It's probably in your Linux distros repositories because it's free and open source software. If you're on an Arch-based system, I think Joplin is in the AUR. Now, the cool thing about Joplin is it's really two applications in one when you install it on the desktop. You get a standard GUI desktop application, which is probably what most people will use, but Joplin also has a terminal interface application that also gets installed. So you can either use the standard GUI Joplin, or you can open up a terminal and just do Joplin in the terminal if that's what you prefer. And of course, they also have the mobile Joplin. So let me open up Joplin. Now remember, Joplin when you install it in Linux, you get two different Joplin applications. So if I launch this with dmenu right now, uh, the program for the desktop GUI application is called Joplin-Desktop. Hit enter. And this is the GUI version of Joplin. And it's a really nice, clean interface. Basically, it's like in a, in a four-columned layout. You have this column here, which is contains all your notebooks, is what Joplin calls them. So your notebooks, each notebook has its notes inside the notebook that you can, you know, look at. And then the notes themselves, this is the note written in Markdown. And this is the note rendered here. And if you want to, you can edit these markdown documents and it will edit it in real time. So if I wanted to change this from tips to just tip, you can see live action here. It just changes that for you as it renders it over into the far right pane. And these initial notebooks and the notes inside the notebooks that are installed with Joplin out of the box are great because that's essentially your man page. There is no official man page for Joplin. You can't open up a terminal and man Joplin, but you don't need a man page because it basically ships with the man page in these notes here. You have welcome to Joplin here. And this basically just explains the standard layout of Joplin, what it calls the three column layout. It's three columns because you have your notebooks, notes, and then the uh, note itself that you can edit, but it's really four columns in the GUI because you also have the the uh, displayed rendered version of the markdown document as well. Although you can hide some of this if you want to, you can click the toggle sidebar here and the far left sidebar that contains all your notebooks will go away. You can toggle that on and off. You can also toggle on the note list if you wanted to, you can toggle them all off just so you get the markdown document itself. That way you can just edit without anything else to distract you. I'm going to toggle the note list and the sidebar back on for a second because I'm, I'm going to go to the second note in the list here because this is one of the most important features is importing and exporting. Those of you that use Evernote, I don't know anything about Evernote. Um, it's not free and open source software. It's not available on Linux anyway. I, I don't know anything about it, but I know a lot of you guys that are really into note taking apps use Evernote. And if you use Evernote, you can import your Evernote notes into Joplin. So it does have that ability. I know that's an important feature for a lot of you guys. And it also has the ability to export your Joplin notes as well. So that's a really important point. And probably the most important one is the third note here that came installed by default in Joplin is how to synchronize your Joplin notes. And it tells you exactly how to do it with Dropbox, with Nextcloud, and with OneDrive. Now I do have a Nextcloud. So to sync with Nextcloud, all I really needed to do was go up here and under the tools menu, you have options. Click on options. 
and you have these various tabs here. Go to the second tab that says synchronization. By default, it's going to be on Dropbox. Uh, I, of course, set it to Nextcloud. You have to give it your Nextcloud's web DAV URL, and that's easy enough to get in Nextcloud. So in Nextcloud, to get your web DAV, all you need to do is go to the bottom left when you sign into your Nextcloud and go to Settings, and it will give you the URL you need. That's your web DAV URL, and then once you have that, just plug that in right there. Of course, you need to give your Nextcloud username, your Nextcloud password, hit apply, hit OK, and you are good. And then from there, go to File and click Synchronize, and it will sync all of your Joplin notes into Nextcloud. Under the fourth note that is here by default, that's it's called Tips. Some neat stuff here that is kind of important stuff to know is, of course, these documents need to be written in Markdown, and it supports what they call GitHub-flavored Markdown. So those of you that use GitHub, or in my case, something like GitLab, if you've, you've written some Markdown documents probably for your GitHub or GitLab pages, your README files are always marked down. You, sometimes you write the license in a markdown format. So you can do all of those GitHub styled things in these markdown documents, such as the tables. Uh, if you've ever written a table in GitHub markdown, you see this table right here is the markdown and this is the way it is rendered once it's displayed as HTML. And then of course you have your checkbox lists here. You see you have, all you need to do is create these empty square brackets and then just throw an X in one of them and it becomes checked. You see milk, eggs, beer here, but the beer is checked, but milk and eggs is not checked. Whoever created that grocery list, I like them. You can also do some math expressions with KTech here. I, I don't know anything about this stuff, but you can see that this mathematical expression here gets rendered to look like this over here. Let me resize the columns here. Just so you can, it's kind of clear what's going on. You have your notebooks. I have two different notebooks here. It's because I have Joplin installed on my desktop Linux. And I also have Joplin installed on my Android phone. And when I synced both of them to my next cloud, I have two different sets of tips. And the reason this is, is because the man pages that are installed by default here inside Joplin, you know, these standard markdowns that are already there are slightly different depending on whether you have the desktop client or the mobile client. And I'm, I'm syncing to both devices. So I have tips for both desktop and mobile here. Joplin also supports tags. You see under the notebooks, you have tags here. And basically, you can assign tags to any note you write. That way, it's just easier to search for something. For example, one of the documents here is tagged Markdown, I guess because it discusses the proper Markdown format for writing in Joplin. And why do you need tags when you have notebooks? Wouldn't the notebooks themselves uh, serve as tags? Say I created a notebook called programming and everything I write about programming is in that notebook and then I have another notebook about music everything I write about music is in that notebook but there is the potential to maybe in the programming forum maybe I'm talking about writing a music app and you end up with tags for markdown files that are in two separate notebooks so that's just an easier way to do some searching for these markdown documents by the way searching in the GUI app there is a search bar so you can always search for something so I could search for Nextcloud if I was interested in the Nextcloud synchronization and it returns the two notes that actually contain the Nextcloud synchronization stuff here. Again, it looks like it's duplicated, but it's not. One of these is for desktop, one of these is for mobile, since I'm syncing the notes from all my devices. Now, if you want to export the entire Joplin database, you can do that. You can also export single notes as well. You can, for example, export this note we're currently looking at as a PDF. You could also export everything as a HTML directory. You could export the entire Joplin database, if you will, as markdown documents. The default format, it looks like, is something called JEX, which is Joplin Export File. I don't know anything about that particular format, but it's there for you to use as well. Now, I think the desktop GUI client is pretty self-explanatory, even though I know most of you guys will probably use the GUI. And it's a fantastic program. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. The one I need to spend some time on, though, is the terminal-based Joplin. So I'm going to open up a terminal. And I zoomed in here just a little bit so you guys can see. And then we just need to launch Joplin by running Joplin. 
The first thing you're going to notice is that notebook that I created in the desktop client. Remember the programming notebook I created? I also have it here. I also have that programming note one in the programming notebook that I created. Now normally you would not have the same notes in the GUI client and the terminal client, but the reason I have them is because I have both the GUI version and the terminal version and my Android Joplin, all three synced to my next cloud because all three of them are syncing to my next cloud. I've got the same notes regardless of which of the three versions of Joplin I run. Now syncing Joplin on the GUI version is dead simple. Anybody can figure that out. Getting the sync on the terminal client, I had to dig around a little bit, so I'm going to help you guys out here. The first thing you need to get any kind of help information in Joplin, there's a uh, command mode, kind of like in Vim. You type colon and then give it a command. You could type help space all, and it'll give you all the help, I guess. Gives you some information about sync here. Another helpful command is colon help space key map if you're worried uh, or don't know the key bindings there. Another one you could do is just simply help with no arguments. And you see we have the possible commands in command mode are all of these right here. And this one here is the one we are going to use to sync. So you need to type colon config space and sync dot target space and then the number of whatever cloud syncing service you're trying to sync to. Now I know that Nextcloud is five because I had to set this up for my Nextcloud. I'm not sure what Dropbox and OneDrive are but if I don't give it any arguments at all I think it will tell me. Yes, so two is the file system, three is OneDrive, four is OneDrive dev, and six is web DAV and 7 is Dropbox and yes 5 was Nextcloud. So anyway what you need to do is run config and then space sync.target5 and then you need to hit enter. I've already done this and then you need to run the following three commands after you set up Nextcloud as the sync target. You need to config space sync.5 because we're doing Nextcloud in my case but you may have a different number if you're doing Dropbox or OneDrive and then dot path space so sync.5.path space and then the address the web dav address for your next cloud so it'll be something like https colon slash slash domain.com slash web dav slash and then you need to create a folder to send all this stuff to on your next cloud uh, i named mine joplin maybe that's what you're going to name yours to anyway hit enter so now we've got the path to where we're going to sync everything to and then you need to run the command config space sync dot five dot username and then space and then the user name for your next cloud account and then finally run the command config space sync dot five dot password space and then your password for your next cloud account hit enter boom you're good to go you're synced up now let me just navigate around a little bit in the terminal application. So if I go to the welcome for the CLI documentation, so now I have three different packages of welcome information, one for the command line interface, one for the desktop GUI client, and one for the mobile device because all three of them had their own packages. Then by default the key bindings are tab to navigate through the columns. So if you just tab, you get between the three columns. So I'm just going to go over one and, you know, then you can go down to the notes and you see you get the preview window here. Now this is not an editor here. This is just a preview. It's just d displaying the markdown document, but you can't really edit it. And you're like, well, you can't edit it. What's the point of Joplin if you can't edit it? Well, you hit enter basically on a note. So if I go down to the third note, synchronizing your notes here, if I hit enter, what it will do is it will open this in your default text editor. Now the default text editor on my machine is actually Emacs, but I configured Joplin in such a way where it's always gonna open in Vim because it doesn't make sense for Joplin to open in a GUI application like Emacs or Sublime or VS Code or Gedit. I mean, you can do it. And I know a lot of you guys that use the command line interface probably will do it. But the reason you don't want to do that is because when you get to a note and you hit enter, what's going to happen is now you're going to have two windows open. You're going to have the Joplin terminal window and then you're going to have Sublime or VS Code or Gedit or whatever. But if you use a terminal based editor, 
So we're talking Vim or Nano or the terminal version of Emacs. It's great because Joplin just goes away for a second because Vim is a terminal application. When you quit out of Vim, you just go straight back into the terminal application of Joplin. And let's talk about key bindings one more time. So again, colon to get into the command mode and then help space key map. And here are the default key bindings. Actually, these are not default. I've actually changed these a little bit. I left the defaults there, but I added some of my own. By default, to navigate between the three columns, again, it's tab and shift tab to go the other direction. So tab goes one way through the columns, shift tab goes the other way. If you're a terminal kind of guy, you're probably used to Vim key bindings for everything. So tabbing to go one way and then shift tabbing to go back the other way. You know what? H and L, right? <laughs> L goes right, H goes left, and then of course J goes down, K goes up instead of using either the arrow keys or the tabs. I left the arrow keys and tabs functioning. I can use them, but it just makes sense to go ahead and add H, J, K, L because Otherwise, I'm constantly trying to hit them anyway. And what you guys just saw flash across the screen there is the syncing process. I don't know why it throws all this up when it does the sync. I, I don't need to see it. Maybe it's something that I could mute at some point. But if I hit TC to toggle the console TC, you know, all that stuff goes away. Of course, you know, the console, the help key map thing goes away to, uh, again, TC. In my case, I remapped that because that's a strange key binding, TC. I remapped it to TT, just my own personal preference. So anytime I want to bring up the console, I can get back that console that you know, had the help information for key map or TT to toggle it a little more so we can read it a little more. And TT one more time just makes it completely go away. Now, I said I edited my key bindings, but how do you edit the key bindings? Well, let's open up a file manager here. So I'll open up a VIFM here, my terminal-based file manager. And you want to go to your .config folder in your home directory. And in the .config directory, you are going to have some folders called Joplin. And when I say some folders called Joplin, I mean that. You're going to have Joplin, lowercase, and then you're going to have Joplin-desktop, also lowercase. But if I search for Joplin capitalized there is also a joplin with a capital j so i'm going to go to just joplin lowercase j go into that directory and you have this here keymap.json i'm going to hit enter to open this it's going to open in emacs but it doesn't matter vim emacs and the syntax is pretty simple to uh, read here let me move the document so you can read it here you have keys and then whatever you want to set the key binding as and then what that key binding does as far as a function there is a sample keymap.json that doesn't ship with Joplin and when you install it but if you go to the website the default website that I'm going to link to joplinapp.org or whatever it is there is a sample keymap.json just paste that into the .config slash Joplin directory and then edit it to your heart's content and you can have that thing set to to do anything so if there you find yourself constantly running some complicated commands in Joplin just you know create some easier key bindings for you so how do you create a notebook in the command line version of Joplin? Well, you do colon and M-K-B-O-K -K for make book. And then what do you want to title the book? I'm going to do in quotes, show notes, in quotes, hit enter. Now you see I have a notebook here called show notes. Now there are no notes in the notebook, but again, go into command mode. So colon M-K-N-O-T-E, make note space. And then this is a note. End quote, hit enter. And we just created a note. Now if you want to actually edit that note, put something in it, you need to enter the editor. So just highlight the note, hit enter. It's going to launch your default editor. In my case here, it's set to Vim. And from here you can... Go ahead and and you can do what you need to do here. Escape, right, and quit. That is annoying every time it syncs, how it, it flashes that text along the screen. I need to see if there's something I can do about that to stop that. And one thing you need to know, anytime you want to run a command on the note that's highlighted, the alias for the note that's highlighted is dollar symbol n. So let me run this command. Colon R E N for rename space and then dollar symbol n for rename the file that we're currently highlighting then in quotes i'll type another name end quote hit enter 
and we just renamed it. If you wanted to move it, you could MV and then dollar symbol N, and then wherever it is you want to move it, move it to a different notebook maybe, maybe move it to the programming notebook, hit enter. And now if I go over to programming, you will see I have the note called another name now over in that notebook. And to delete a note, the default key bindings I think are backspace, or delete the delete key or the backspace key on the keyboard and those are fine key bindings very simple but to stick to the vim theme what i did was i remapped it to dd which is the vim command to delete a line here in joplin i have dd set to just delete so if i do dd not in command mode just dd you see i'm prompted do i really want to delete that note yes or no i'm gonna choose no to exit out of joplin you can colon and then type the command exit and you're back in the terminal here. Let me clear the screen. Now let me launch Joplin again. So you probably don't want to have to always type colon exit. I remapped this to exit on either two different Vim-like commands. I could do WQ, and not, not colon WQ, just WQ quits. Let me launch Joplin again. Or I can do capital Z, capital Z. So two capital Zs, ZZ. Boom. Launch Joplin one more time. And, you know, that's just some, some of the basics of Joplin, the desktop GUI application and the command line application. Obviously, I have the mobile application installed on my phone as well. Now, I am not one of those guys that does a lot of note taking. I don't make to do lists. I don't write notes. I don't even do like show notes for the YouTube channel or anything. I've never been one of those note taking people. So I don't really know how Joplin compares to some of the other things that you guys seem to really love. Those of you that use Emacs, you're not going to use Joplin. I can tell you right now because in Emacs you have org mode, you have other stuff that just blows everything else away. I get that. But if you're looking for something outside of Emacs, I think Joplin may actually be your best bet because of the syncing capabilities. You know, you can sync it with your next cloud. You can have it on all your devices. And of course, it's free and open source software, which is a big deal for someone like me. Now, before I go, this show was made possible by Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lambda, Michael, Mitchell, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they're the producers of the show. Without these guys, this episode about the Joplin open source note taking app wouldn't have been possible. Show is also brought to you by all these other names you're seeing on the screen right now. All of those fine ladies and gentlemen help support me over on Patreon without these guys this channel wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, you'll find me over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.